Hello everyone. Today's session is going to be an interesting one. And this is because today we are going to discuss eight mistakes that you might have been making and should avoid as a data stage developer. So let's begin. First, bulky job design. So when you try to do too much processing in a single job and use too many stages, the job design is going to be too big and too large. And that is going to make it difficult for anybody to debug it, to understand the job flow and to maintain the job later on. It is also going to take a much longer compilation time. So every time you make, even if it's a small change to the job and you need to compile it again, it's going to probably hang your data service servers. It's going to take a lot of time, compilation time, which is a waste of time. Now, the most important thing is that you're going to compromise the restartability of the job. So for any reason, if that job aborts in a production environment, then you're not being you're not going to be able to save the intermediate processing at any point in that job. So you need to rerun the job again, all the data would be processed again, all the transformation logic would be executed. So again, it is going to be a long process and you're unnecessarily repeating the transformations that you've already performed. So what you can do to avoid this is to make the job design modular. So you can split the job into logical points. For example, if you're doing the extraction, transformation and loading in a single job, you can split into three separate extraction, transformation and load job and then save your output from each of that job into an intermediate data set that can be used as an input for the downstream job. Now, another thing that you should remember when you're designing a job is to include reject handling. So any records that are getting rejected or any kind of valid reject or invalid reject should be collected into your reject table or your reject file, whatever you are having, so that they can be analyzed later with the business and the corrective actions can be taken on those records. Another good uh, job design would be to include the audit columns. So audit columns are things like your job run time, job start time, what is the current uh, state of your job, whether it's running or whether it has aborted or whether it completed successfully, when was it last run and so on. So these things are important uh, in a production environment when you're analyzing that what was the last successful run of the job, how long it took to run, how many records were processed and so on. So you should have that stream also coming out from your job. So ETL audit columns and the rejection, the rejection handling should be performed. Another important thing to remember, which many of us think that it's okay, how does it matter? But it does matter, you should give your job a meaningful job name. So that makes it possible for anybody who's looking at that job flow or a set of jobs to understand what that job specifically is for. So you should also at this time remember to include a job description which can be visible on your job canvas as well. So you can add an annotation and just describe that this job extracts the data from this table and performs this transformation and writes it to an output data set. So you understand what is the business purpose of that job, what at a high level technically that job is doing and you give it a meaningful job name. So if I'm just going through a list of jobs, I would understand that this particular job is doing this particular kind of task. And as we already discussed, make the job design modular so that it is easier to maintain. It takes lesser time for compilation. You can easily debug it if something goes wrong. And then you can also add restartability for the job as well. Moving on to the next common mistake, which is ignoring the database power. Now, this is very common and this is a big mistake that we are making if we are ignoring the database power. Now, if we are reading from the source tables which reside in a particular database, obviously any kind of operations like joins or data transformations or applying simple functions like trimming the data or applying date functions, converting date into years or converting the format of the date. So all those functions are going to be much faster in a database as compared to data stage because the data itself resides in the database. So always try to use the database power to its maximum. So any kind of simple joins. So if you're reading from three tables, which are in the same schema or which are in different schemas deciding in the same database and you're, you need to join those tables, it's a good idea to join them in your source query itself instead of joining them using a join stage in a data stage job. 
because joining them in your source query is always going to be faster than performing that join in your data sage job. A very important use is for date transformations, date data type transformations or format transformations because there are very many functions in data stage as well to do the same thing but it's a lot easier to do that using the database functions or the SQL functions. So you can use it for performing simple functions, you can use it for scenarios where you need to use the case functions. So if this happens, if then else kind of uh, structure, so you can use the case function which is going to be very effective in SQL and analytical functions, subqueries and all. So you can use the database power and but do not make the source SQL too complicated because then the query might become too big and take longer to process. So if the data volume is too huge and the query is getting too complicated, then it is a good idea to put that logic in your data sage job. Another uh, common mistake that we make in parallel jobs is trying to read and write to the same database table. So I'm reading from the same database table, doing some transformation and trying to write to the same database table. So we should actually try to avoid this because sometimes it can create lock on the table because we are doing the select statement, we are running the select as well as uh, running the insert and update statements on the same table. So it might lock the database table. So we should try av and avoid that. The third mistake is the ineffective use of join, lookup, and transformer stages. So joins and lookups are easily confused because they have a similar function. But a key thing to remember whenever we're using a join stage or a lookup stage or deciding to use one is that a lookup stage has to be used when your primary data source or the incoming data set is smaller in volume and your reference data set is big enough and small enough to fit into your RAM entirely because then because your whole data set reference data set is in the memory it makes the lookup operation very fast. Joins have to be used whenever your incoming data set your primary and secondary linked data is high in volume because then a join makes the operation faster because it uses the sorting and partitioning which makes this process faster. Transformers a common mistake that we uh, make is using too many transformers in the same job that will slow down the job because it needs an external C++ compiler for its execution. So use native stages as much as you can. So use uh, probably a remote duplicate stage or a search stage or a copy stage to perform these simple transformations which can be done using these stages instead of using an explicit transformer stage. And that is not to say that you would not be using a transformer stage. After all, you're going to do transformations in your job. So any transformation job would at a minimum be having at least a single transformer. So when using a transformer, there are again some best practices that you can follow and some things that you can keep in mind to make it more effective. So stage variables. Any kind of calculation that we need to do repeatedly for the output column. So let's say there's some uh, calculation that we need to repeat for two output columns that are coming out from the transformer. Then instead of doing that in the column derivations, we should prefer to do them in the stage variable. So what is happening here is that we are only doing the transformation once and using the output value of the stage variable in the output column derivation for those output columns from the transformer. So that reduces the processing happening multiple times and therefore saves the processing time of the job. Use constraints wisely. So let's say we have a requirement wherein we have three outputs coming out from a transformer and in the first output we want to collect the data for New York City and the second output we want to collect data for let's say Chicago City and in the third output we want to collect the uh, all the remaining uh, records for all the remaining cities then you can use your constraint now for new york city let's say there is some other derivation that you're doing for chicago there is some other derivation for the for some sales column or something then instead of doing it in a stage variable here the best practice would be to do that in your column derivation because you only want to do it for some restricted number of records so use a constraint over here to filter those records instead of repeating all these records on all three output links and then applying the filter use your constraints to filter the records right at the transformer level and perform your selective derivations there now another function which is related is the otherwise operator so otherwise is just a checkbox that you need to check in your transformer so use it correctly because i've seen many jobs where it is being used incorrectly which results in incorrect output from the job so 
otherwise has to be mostly the last link in the link ordering for your output links. So using the same example that we saw there, now the requirement is that for the third link, we want all the records for all the cities, which are not New York and which are not Chicago. So you can have your two links, two upper links, which are filtering the data for New York and Chicago. And in the third link, you can just check box the otherwise option and it would collect all the data. But the thing that you need to make sure is that it should be the last link in your link ordering. Then make use of transformer functions, macros, and system variables. So there are a lot of functions in the transformers which can be used. So may make optimum use of those functions instead of using then additional stages because you're already using transformers. So put all the logic in there instead of using additional stages later in the job. Use the macros and system variables like you have the job start time start which can be used for the ETL audit tables. So you want to see what, when, what time the job last ran. So you can use that variable itself instead of doing it in some other complicated way. Moving on to the next common mistake is again a big one. It is mixing up partitioning or sorting. Now mixing up partitioning or sorting is a big mistake because it will mess up all your output data and it will actually make the whole job design incorrect. So First thing to remember, use the correct type of partitioning. So be very clear with what kind of partitioning has to be used, whether it has to be hash partitioning, entire partitioning, same partitioning, or what kind of partitioning has to be used. So I'll give a link to the video below, and you can go to that uh, video and learn more about partitioning and uh, sorting techniques. Now, the other mistake is to use the incorrect fields for partitioning and sorting. So we look at an example below and see what it means. Uh, and another thing to do is using too much partitioning. So doing unnecessary partitioning. So uh, doing any kind of partitioning is a, a processing overhead for the job. So you do not have to do too much partitioning. You only need to do partition the data where it is actually needed. Okay, so going back to incorrect fields for partitioning and sorting, let's look at this example below. So our requirement is that you're required to find the latest bank transaction record for each customer in the daily source data set. So you have some source coming and you have multiple records for the customer, which are transaction records for the customers and they have their own time stamps. Now we only want one transaction record for each customer in the output. And that should be the latest transaction for that day. So how do you, which which for uh, partitioning would you use and which columns would you do the partitioning on and what kind of sorting is needed and where. So the answer to this requirement is simply that you need to use hash partitioning, which is the key based partitioning. You need to partition your data on the customer ID column because we have got duplicates, duplicate records on the customer ID column and our requirement is to have a unique record based on the customer ID. So first of all, I'm going to partition hash partition on the customer ID. Once I have hash partition on the customer ID, I need to select the latest transaction record. So latest transaction record is a uh, transaction timestamp, the highest value of the transaction timestamp. So I'm going to use sorting on the transaction timestamp column and I'm going to sort in a descending order so that I get the latest transaction record. So it's known that there's no partitioning being done on the transaction timestamp here, only sorting being done. If you do a partition on transaction timestamp as well, then you would get all the four records in the output because then you are uh, recognizing a unique record by the combination of customer ID and transaction timestamp. So which is unique for all the three records. So you need to partition on customer ID and sort only on the transaction timestamp in a descending order. Moving on to the next one, hard coding values. Now this is actually just a symbol of a bad developer. So never try to hard code values. There are some obviously exceptional circumstances where we need to do that but generally never hard code values on your data sets job that's simply bad job design so instead what you can do is use parameters and parameter sets so parameters use parameters parameterize it so that you can run it with different values in different environments use parameter sets which are a very effective way of grouping together similar parameters and then using that parameter set for multiple jobs instead of creating parameters for each job you can use that parameter set across multiple jobs 
Then another way, another good way is to use parameter set values. So you, for the same parameter set, you can turn configure values. For example, you have different values, your database connection values for your development, your testing and production environments. And you can use the value features of the parameter sets. Use the same parameter set for each environment. Just point it to different values. Okay, moving on to the sixth one, nulls. Now, nulls can really mess up your data so null handling make sure that you do explicit null handling in your transformer so for any column that is supposed to be nullable and you're performing some transformation function you're using some term, a function you are trimming or you're doing something um, any kind of function or even if you're just passing it to your output uh, target column then it's always a good practice to explicitly handle the null using the is null or is not null or null to value null to zero there's so many functions in data stage to do that so use those functions to explicitly handle nulls in the transformer because then failures happen for various reasons because of these nulls they're difficult to debug um, using the job log and i mean they're difficult to catch as well because it depends on your source data so sometimes you don't make data of that sort you don't expect that data of that sort but in production suddenly that data comes which is having nulls and your job fails which we want to avoid at all costs so always try to handle explicitly handle nulls using all these functions in your transformer okay the next one is inconsistent data types so mismatching data types so you're reading a column from your table which is defined in your database table as well child 40 you're reading it as well child 30 so do not do that because it might not result in job failure it might result only in warnings but we want to minimize the warnings as much as we can we do not want these unnecessary warnings it might silently truncate your data and we would not even realize it sometimes so try to make the data types consistent also for the lookups and uh, joins sometimes the data types are mismatching so try to make them use cast function in uh, your sql query to convert the data type explicitly so that it is the correct data type and you get no warning from the job so you can always use the cast function to make the data type correct okay the last one the eighth one metadata so Everybody cares about the job, but many times we forget about the metadata. Metadata is the data about the job that you have created. So always remember to save your table definitions. So that table might be used at multiple places. Let's have a standard table definition saved, which we would be using across all the jobs. So it also makes it easier when we're using the find and advanced find functions in the data stage designer window to see which all jobs are using that table. It makes it very much easier. So save your table definitions, use standard table definitions for the same tables across all your jobs give meaningful job names we have already discussed that a meaningful job name is important because it defines the business purpose or the logical purpose of the job follow naming standards for links and stages as well every data stage project would have their own naming standard of prefixing what prefix you should use for which kind of stage and then some business meaningful name to that link even for the stages the same naming standards have to be followed it makes the job to, so much easier to understand later on and also when a third person is taking a look at the job it makes it easier to understand for that person as well so while designing the job we might not realize that these things are important because we already know the logic we already know the flow we are designing the job so we are very well versed with the job but if any third person is taking a look at the job and for the downstream even when you yourself are looking uh, taking a look at the job and you don't remember it so nicely at that point of time then these things always help so naming standards metadata all these things are also very important and they're part of good job design if those are not followed it actually gives a very bad impression of the job and of the developer so these are some common mistakes that data stage developers generally make if you think that there should be some more mistakes that should be included and that you might have been making in your career and might have realized later then you can put down your comments below and you're always welcome to put down the comments and i'll be glad to read them thank you so much again for watching this training session and please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel thank you and talk